care advisory board that doesn't have sympathy, doesn't understand where you're coming from because we're all we're all in the same boat. We understand that, and we want to make sure that you know you need to be profitable. We need to make sure that we don't do anything that's going to harm the consumer in the process. A little different deal. Your your non-consent tows, you're able to negotiate those, and it's you don't have as many requirements for impound yards and even though some of those may go back to a yard at some point because somebody calls you to pick it up and that they don't have a place to put it while they while they wait there's a lot of variables in that so let's you know I would entertain that motion from someone that, that we instruct the staff to continue to to work to come to resolution on this and bring it back to us at a later meeting we'll be meeting again in October probably based on the time you've taken since the last meeting it probably isn't an unreasonable time to gives you 60 days to let's get this thing so that it does make sense and and, and bring some resolution to it Don, is this is this going to be debated with this group I mean going forward with representation from the tower how, how do we well, how I perceive this in the short run, uh, and my recommendation would be, is that our staff continue to meet with them and then bring back some recommendations back to to a future board meeting that maybe everyone has had some agreement that, that we can have some input into making that make sense. Well, not being uh, very uh, understanding and knowing anything about this, these non-consents are the ones that... that come from the enforcement and the, that, exactly that right? and that's what this is okay. and that's what uh, and you know I, I have to declare a conflict of interest I had one of these in Oregon that was a, almost an $8,000 tow to go less than 100 miles so uh, that's the extreme the other way I want to make sure we and I was never able they they had a hooked and I paid it to get it unhooked and I never got resolution from anyone on it ever I mean, we don't want to do that. So that's, I, I don't, I, and I know you don't. It's obvious you've come to the table to, to make sense out of that. But those are. Can I add that to Joe's question? Yes, Chad. Another part of this uh, is not, it's not just an enforcement required or enforcement uh, requested tow. Uh, parking enforcement, if somebody parks in a spot that they're not supposed to park in, a movie theater, a restaurant, or apartment complex, that also is affected by this. That's so it's, it's where nobody, uh, the, the owner has no rec, you know, other than they parked in the wrong spot, they don't know who took it or where it's gone. Well, they can find it out, but that's how that one works. Too. So and, it, and that it drove some of the legislation is there's been some apparent abuses on that. So we, that's where that. Ron Olson again. I, uh, I have a mixed feeling on that thing with the, the uh, private property impounds. That's what you're talking about. It's not the same. They're private property impounds. I'm not, I do a lot of those. I'm not comfortable with a raise on that one. In other words, PPIs are an entirely different end of our industry. And I'm not really comfortable with asking for a raise on the PPI. Now, that's a good point, and that, that part of, be part of your discussion as you work with our staff to... I just think that it's asking too much. Uh, most of those PPIs are a, a limited deal where uh, really they're not a big issue. Uh, people come and they either pick the car up or they abandon the car one way or the other. But as far as uh, more money for doing PPIs, well, my own personal that. opinion. Okay, I think that's a good Mr. Chairman, I, we haven't really discussed that, but I think just sitting here, I think we would be in agreement with that as well. Okay, I think. The, my name is Lynn with the Davis County Towing Association. The interesting thing that we have with non-consent tows is um, it's the, the towing issues are multifaceted. You have private properties, which in the R909 have their own set fee per tow. 
you have the non-consent police generated, which are your accidents or your hold for owners when they arrest the individual, they can't leave the car parked on the freeway. Those have a different fee schedule under a different code on a per hour basis. You have administrative fees, which are tied to certified letters and things that go under administration. Those have a set fee under the R909. You have storage fees, which are separate and apart from the towing per hour. So when you're looking at the fees involved in the R909 that govern the towing, when you talk about an hourly rate, that could be tied to the non-consent non police generated. If you talk about a rate increase on a per tow, you could be talking about the private property. When you talk about storage, that deals with the yard. Um, Neil spoke to raises on based on a per hour rate. I sent out a mass email to the towers that um, are in our association in Davis County. And the emails that I got back um, basically stated that where they're seeing, because there is such a huge conflict in the hourly rates that go along with these tows where if you break down, you can hire a truck versus if the, if the trooper calls you a truck and you don't have a choice. The towers up in that I got responses back wanted me to address storage rates. Not so much fee increases, but storage increases. Right now we're at $25 per day for storage. The last increase went from $15 a day to $25 a day. The average car involved in an accident if the insurance company is on the ball, it used to be the car would languish in your yard if it was involved in an accident for a week to two weeks while the adjusters did this and that. Now, with the insurance companies having direct repair facility body shops and co-parts and IAA, a car typically will languish in your yard for, that, that time has been cut down to a two to three day run. Um, so what has happened is, Yard, yard fees have increased. Um, if you own your own property, the property taxes have increased. Um, you're storing the vehicle. A lot of the agencies are now requiring garage keepers insurance in the event that something should happen to the vehicle while it is in your care, custody, and control. So in other words, if, if I tow your car <coughs> from an accident and it's in my yard and some little creep pops over the fence and decides to go through all the cars and breaks out the windows, when you come to get your vehicle, you're really going to want me to replace that window. Even though I have done due diligence and most reputable towing companies will do that. Those are the costs that go into the garage keepers. That's where the storage is tied, to take care of the storage of the vehicle. Most of the towers that I've talked with, because of the increase in garage keepers, the request by the police departments to ensure that nothing happens to these cars when they're in your yard, would like to see an increase in storage of at least $10 per day. When the cars started dropping down to a two-day, if you, if you tow eight cars, and each car only stays in your yard for two days when it's going to be picked up. Your, your storage is, is $50 per vehicle for eight vehicles. If your yard rent is 700 on our garage keepers, we just went through and did all of our stuff between my garage keepers and my car go. And it was about a mixed split. But my garage keepers just readjusting on my yard. Um, when it, it increased my premiums $50 per month. That's not much, but it's like $600 over the course of a year. But the cost to store the vehicles, the time has shortened up, and the cost to do that have increased substantially. And so that's where the increase, if a car's only gonna stay two days, if you increase the storage 10 to $15 per day, that helps to offset the cost of the insurance that is being required to cover those vehicles and things down those lines. So, yeah. 
well, while you're there, uh, you, yeah. you proposed the, the, the uh, storage rate be increased for PPIs and for police. Uh, is well, there, if we're going to talk about a split, are we going to are we going to split well, all, or are we going to just take bits and pieces? See, this this is the thing, and unfortunately, storage the rates for PPIs and police generated <coughs> tows that is split and differentiated. The the rate for the storage is not. Um, if you and we don't differentiate, unfortunately, between this gentleman's car that I hooked at the Beatles because he wasn't supposed to be there, and this gentleman's car that I hooked because he got arrested and there was nobody else in the car to drive the vehicle. So I have both vehicles in my yard. My insurance doesn't differentiate between his car or his car. So the storage is pretty much a fixed rate. It doesn't matter why the car is in the yard, the car's in the yard. Now, the only, di the only distinct distinguishing difference between the two or the PPI and the police generated is an hourly rate. It's not, I mean, it's the same base. It, it, it's the it, same rate. It, it pretty much is. You know what I mean? So, but, yeah. but there is a differentiation. Let's have that be part of your discussion. Okay, let's back to the. <laughs> I'm not in a position to do it. I would make a motion that you suggest it, but unfortunately I'm a has been, so I can't. Well, I want to get a comment. To convince him to do it. Okay, I'll I'll make a motion that we uh, we refer it back to the to the staff and have the staff meet with with uh, the towing companies. And come back with a recommendation to the board uh, on what what they think we should do. We can address uh, the storage and the hourly and, and the increase that they've, they've proposed. Motion. Second. Second by Jeff. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Good luck. I'd just like to offer an assignment to those in the industry today. Um, we probably, in this room, we're representing between 60 and 80 companies. Is that accurate? Yeah. <clears throat> There's 500 plus in the state. I'd like to have more of a representation of this yes. as we further discuss this because I know there's some regional things. Uh, and if we're going to get creative with how we're establishing this, well, let's, let's do it right the first time. Yeah. If we need to base it on region, Based it on region. If we need to, you know, if, there, if there's not a problem in some of the outlying areas, well, then maybe we need to look at regions. Regions as a rate. Uh, other states do it. Uh, we've already we've already seen that. Um, I, I, I really appreciate your your comments on separating the two. I I think that's a great place to start. So I, but but I'd really like to have a, a more unified front from the industry. Uh, I think that helps. Uh, I think your willingness to split that from a consumer standpoint really helps the your public image of that I think goes a long way. I think you got a totally different dynamic once the guy's involved in it, whether it's a DUI or it's a once the police become involved in it, I think it's a different dynamic than if we go pick somebody's car up off a parking lot. I think Absolutely. that's Absolutely. it's a lot more complicated for you, it's a lot more complicated for the person. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that's if I could just interject, Steve with Salt Lake Valley Towing, like you say, we've got 80 companies represented here out of 500 in the state. Uh, the other 420 might be polar opposite to what he just said. The more we bring in, you know, I, there's so many that just don't care. Uh, or, or they don't care until something's regulated that affects them. But, but you see, uh, you, you kind of see what I'm trying to say, though. It's, it's very difficult to, it's to propose a rate increase. All, it's a battle that we've all considered. Oh, I understand. Yeah. It's a battle that we're going to face also with uh, those customers that yeah. we don't even know yet because they haven't been towed. In, in the meantime, <laughs> you know, we, we get an opportunity to come before you guys in August and, and talk about rate increases. In the meantime, we can talk for six years about how to get 500 people you know, well, we're not going to hold the process up, but I can tell you that the process is going to work better the more of you that are here. Yes, right. sir. You know, this is a little bit, I grew up in Panguitch, and there's an old boy there that some of the guys worked with me heard me say this, but it, it really is true. It doesn't matter whether it's governmental budgeting or whether it's this process. 
He said, you know, I took my kids to school. I told the teacher, the little shit's really smart. If he gives you any trouble, just hit the kid next to him. He gets the message. <laughs> and that's, that's where we are with this. So. Thank you, sir. Correct. Make sure that's in the minutes. <laughs> Can I make a request uh, that we receive uh, some information maybe from Adam on people down south and central that uh, are not represented here? If you can provide us some key contacts down there that we can get working with. Yeah, I think that's important that you, because we need everybody involved in it. I think also we need to look at the eastern part of the state. Uh, we don't have any representation at all out of Vernal, Roosevelt, the areas over on the eastern mm -hmm. side of the state. Well, that's the story of our life. <laughs> well, fortunately, one of our board members is from there, so we'll, we'll, we'll reach out to him. You're on the hook. <laughs> yeah. All right. I appreciate you coming and bringing that to us. We're, we're going to move along. I think we've got. Okay. Chad, back. I would like to have a meeting uh, next month. Uh, so we're not just the day before, the week before the Motor Care Advisory Board meeting or you know, presenting something to, to Don and his group. Um, so if we could you know, set a meeting, I'd, I'd be happy to. Do you have a date? Well, you guys, it's going to be more difficult for you guys to get a date than okay. it is for me okay. and Adam. So if you guys would work through Adam, let's, let's, let's take this forward. Thank you, sir. Yeah, sure. and, I, and to your point, Chad, don't bring this back to us the day before saying you want some help. I, <laughs> let's, we know where this has got to, it's got to be a grassroots thing, and you guys can, I can tell you that I know that this group is easy, because they, they, I work with them myself. So meet with them and, and get this where we can help you bring it to conclusion. This is all very new. I mean, we're just, we've been only at this since what, a month? Yeah, and it's, we're, it's obviously far too premature for us to make any kind of a judgment as a board okay. today, and so. I'd just like to thank the board and the gentlemen for the day for the industry. I realize that you're here and there's an appointment you know, and I just appreciate it being here and having a sounding board for us to go somewhere with. Okay. And that's our purpose and that's exactly why we're here. Thank you for that. Okay, Lieutenant Judd, we're going to go to you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as uh, Director Shepard mentioned that uh, right now uh, Salt Lake City, Utah is the host city for the North American Inspectors Championship being held downtown. Um, uh, Todd Curtis is the representative uh, from Utah. He is a former trooper. He's, he's, a, he's an anomaly. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's been, uh, he's been both hats. Yeah. Now he <laughs> works uh, for Utah on the Utah side, and he did win our uh, top hands championship. So we wish him well and his uh, competing in that event. And also at the same time, the uh, National Truck Driving Championship is also being held. I uh, wish those contestants from Utah luck in that. Um, some of the other events that have happened is uh, had an opportunity to attend the Rocky Mountain Regional Safety Rendezvous. We had a uh, great attendance from the industry in Utah, a lot of uh, safety managers and uh, heavy uh, presence from the Utah Trucking Association was there. Had a chance to talk to other uh, Mountain West states about uh, uh, what's happening in their states and we did see a lot of common themes there and had an opportunity to network and uh, discuss those issues. Um, another event is, uh, that's going on is uh, in an effort to increase motor coach safety, we were asked to do that. We have a national passenger carrier strike force that's going to begin here uh, in just a week. Um, we will be working, UHP inspectors will be working with uh, UDOT inspectors and also um, our federal DOT partners to address some uh, specific uh, motor coach operations and try to increase safety in that area. Um, another item to report on is uh, in the last meeting I reported that we had received a grant uh, to address um, aggressive driving and unsafe driving in and around commercial vehicles on known crash corridors in the state. And uh, since May, we've worked uh, just over 70 of these shifts in known crash corridors around the state. Um, we have uh, we've stopped over uh, 500 vehicles, and uh, the idea is not not to just enforce this on, it's not just enforcement on commercial vehicles, it's enforcement on all vehicles, passenger vehicles, and how they interact around commercial vehicles. And so 
our balance is pretty good. We have 46% uh, of the stops have been passenger vehicles and 54 have been commercial vehicles. So they, the uh, troopers that are working in shifts are striking a good balance there. Um, we've had uh, over 200 violations for speeding, a lot of falling too close, a lot of uh, improper unsafe lane changes and uh, improper unsafe merging. So those are direct causation of the crashes that we investigate. And so hopefully this will have a, a, a good impact on uh, increasing safety on those. Uh, we've also had uh, performed uh, over 250 inspections on these commercial vehicles and found 81 out of service violations and over 300 uh, non out of service violations. So uh, again, this is a, a special, basically one year project on that. Uh, one other event um, that is uh, occurring right now that uh, deals a, a lot with our uh, Utah Highway Patrol uh, commercial vehicle side is the uh, inspection of all of the state school buses. Um, there's uh, well over 2,800 school buses in the state that we'll be inspecting. At this point in time, we've, we've completed about 25% of those, and uh, we have uh, troopers that are working with um, fleet managers and school districts all around the state to try to coordinate that. It's, it is quite an effort and uh, quite an undertaking to do that, but uh, it's going on. It's going on right now, and, and uh, typically we have really great support from the school districts and the transportation managers to accomplish that task and ensuring that those buses are safe for all our students in our state. Do we inspect all of them or do we randomly inspect them? We do all of them once a year and then uh, we do a 20 percent um, random in the spring. In the spring. In the spring. Cool. And that is all I have. Cool. Thank you. Thanks for what you guys do. We're incredibly blessed. That those of us who work in other states understand how really lucky we are. So. Thank you for your help. Does anyone have any questions for Highway uh, Patrol? The school bus deal, uh, aren't they required to do the safety inspection annually, like a motor vehicle? Yeah. State this is a, well, aside from that. Yeah. Okay, state, thank you. The state statute actually requires it twice a year. We, 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 kind of count, we, we count the state inspection as that secondary part and, and then do the 20% spot check oh. also. Okay. A little bit of an allowance so we can take advantage of the 20% uh, you know, part of that and use our state inspection for the other, other part of that. And quite frankly, uh, we need to, to be able to utilize that. Uh, it's, it's difficult. It, it takes the entire section uh, to, to do that. As you know, we lost seven positions uh, that were reallocated to the regular field positions uh, for, from that no change in requirements of our inspection so it, it takes the entire section to do uh, that 100% that inspection once a year and, and taking advantage of the other uh, you know the 20% spot check is really helpful on how else we can manage it well I think that's important that's one segment of, they keep all our kids that's one segment that I can tell you nationwide scares the hell out of me Knowing what we're going through to get drivers, and they, it's as bad or worse for them. And when I, I just, I'm petrified over who's taking those kids to school. I just, and so anything you're doing there to, that's good leverage of your manpower. We appreciate it. Mike, I got just one thing. Yes, I just want to thank these three gentlemen uh, publicly um, for their efforts. We have a great relationship uh, between our divisions. Uh, just to add to. To what the lieutenant has talked about, you know, our passenger carrier strike force. Part of our uh, task is to do the on-site review of their of their internal business safety program, and uh, and they're they're going to actually partner with us and, and do all the inspections. We're not we're not certified. Uh, we, we struggle to keep certified because we can't just go out and we can't just stop a, a loaded passenger vehicle to to do an inspection. So we're pretty limited. So I appreciate their support. Um, you know, Bruce Paul is a good friend of mine, and, and he's moved on, and and, uh, and you guys have, have taken over in such a wonderful fashion. Uh, so the, the ball hasn't dropped. Uh, it's well now with Sean, it's at a much higher level. <laughs> Bruce is not not as tall as uh, yeah. Most. <laughs> you know, so I, we can we can just play that one out forever. <laughs> You know, I come up the other level now. The other morning, early in the south end of Fillmore Valley, there was a motor coach stopped, and they had a trooper was out behind it. 
and they were actually taking, they must have broke down, they were taking the passengers off, putting it on a school bus. <laughs> just getting, just coming light. I mean, it was a dangerous time to be, but that must have been the function. It must have broke down and there was a, they were moving people off the motor coach, putting them on a school bus. And, and quite honestly, the school districts have been wonderful about, about things like that, to in an emergency to offload passengers and get them, get them off. Problematic. You don't just, you know, it's not like UTA where you can just call somebody and they're right there. Uh, about. That's a different deal. Yeah. It really is. Thanks to you guys. I appreciate your support. You guys are wonderful. And along with that, our uh, appreciation to the partnership we have with the industry as well. So we, we know we enjoy uh, uh, the relationship that's uh, fairly unique. We have our counterparts in other states, and so we know that it's, that it's something we value. Thank you. Sasha, you have any updates from the association? You want? Yes, yes, I do. So, um, just for record, I'm Sasha sitting on with the Utah Trucking Association. I've been there since about January, so some of the faces are familiar, but some of them don't think I've had the opportunity yet. Um, some good news is we just hit our 500th member, and we're cool. growing at about a 20% rate as of um, January, and we look forward to seeing that continue. Um, our new building, many of you have heard, we had a date of September 5th for the grand opening. Sadly, we've had some issues with Rocky Mountain Power. Um, which will not be discussed on uh, record. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but um, so we are having to move that date. We are in negotiations right now. We've had some people that were planning on flying in and um, some key people we want to make sure that are there. So we're working on a date and we'll get back to you just as soon as we can with it. Probably sometime in October um, is what we're looking at. And also with the new building, um, we are planning on doing an increase about 50% in our seminars. And we don't want to stri stick strictly to um, trucking issues because how about half of our members are allied members so we're looking at seminars doing seminars in QuickBooks time management for leaders how to maintain and keep good employees a lot of different things that we would um, we'd love to invite you to and have you participate so if you are not receiving emails from me I'm the one that's doing a lot of the advertising communications please feel free to give me your information I'll get you on that list and we'll get you guys there a lot of really good information we're, we're working on um, getting to everyone and lastly, the safety and image team, Steve and I and Rick Oaks, we've been working on, on that. And one of the main facets that we've been working on is going to these high schools and talking about um, truck driver safety and driving safer on the big rigs. <coughs> Usually what ends up happening is it's two out of the three of us that will go to a high school. And the trucking industry has been great in giving us trucks and trailers and a driver at each of these schools and the kids can get in the trucks, they can look around, we park cars,